All right, so it's getting late, but I want to finish up this series of videos, and uh, we're going to do a palindrome challenge, and you could write code, and the goal of the challenge isn't to write the most succinct and clever code, but to write the most readable code. So you want code that if somebody just got hired as a junior developer, uh, they'd be able to look at it and make sense of it. They have some understanding of the Go language. Uh, but like they're just starting out. So that's the goal, but Clever's also cool. And when you write your code, write it at the Go Playground and then get the share button here, get the URL and uh, drop it down into the comments of this video. And then you can look at other people's code and you could like rate them up, <laughs> right? If you see a solution that you like and you can leave comments about what you liked in, in your solution or what you like in other people's solutions. So I think this is gonna be totally fun. And this is the completion of a series of videos here. This is a playlist where we learned how computers work and how numeral systems work. And we learned how to measure bits and do bitwise operations and bit shifting and to use IOTA. And then we learned about text and ASCII and Unicode and UTF-8. And, uh, and so if you wanna see that whole playlist and build your skills up to this video, uh, you could go click on a link down in the description to get to that playlist. And all of the code for this is in this repo. If you go to GitHub, goes to 11, learn to code, go version three. Uh, this code is uh, the 000s are all the setup and then all the code down here is for the course I'm currently creating. Uh, learn to code the Go uh, programming language. <laughs> That's what it's called. And I'm just going to start out here by doing a git commit, uh, git commit dash, git add dash dash all. And uh, I want to show you the code up there. So I'm going to git commit this. And, uh, and I want to also show you versioning persistently, patiently. Uh, we are bound to succeed. And uh, then we'll push that and then we'll look at the tag. So I'm going to clear all this out and get tag. And so I'm going to do a get tag and add a new version here of 1.9.0. Uh, Why not? And then I'm going to do git push origin uh, tags. And uh, now if I look at my tags, get tags, uh, get tag, I now have version 1.9.0. And if I come here and hit refresh, um, you know, I could take a look here at the tags and I can see I have 190. And plus, the reason I wanted to do that is I now have palindrome here. And so this is a solution I kind of coded before the video started. I'm going to recode that for you now, just so you could see that and you could see me think through it a little bit. And I'm going to clear all this out to do that. And um, it seemed like there's something else I wanted to say, but it slipped my mind. So <laughs> when we get to it, if it comes back, I'll uh, say it. So I'm going to do a function here. And my function is going to be called uh, is poly, and it's going to take in a string, and it's going to return a bool. And, uh, and then in this function, I want to know how many characters, because a palindrome is like this, like mom and top spot. So I want to know how many runes, how many characters are in each one. So I'm going to do a rune right here is my first thing. It's going to be colon equal, and, uh, and then that's going to be a UTF-8. And it's going to be rune, uh, rune count and string. And I'm going to count the string that gets passed in. So I'll get my rune count. And then I'm going to do half of my rune count. And so that's going to be equal to r divided by 2. And then I'm going to do a for loop. And so it's going to be from starting from 0, the first position. Um, and it'll go all the way to my condition will be uh, i uh, is, uh, so long as i is less than mid right? I is less than or equal to mid. We'll do that. And if it's less than or equal to mid, I think I'm just going to do uh, less than mid. That, that's what I want. And then I plus plus. Maybe I'll adjust that, but I think that's what I want. <laughs> and, uh, and then in here, I'm going to check, right? So I got to check to see if, uh, and basically what I want to do is, you know, for each position here, so when I'm at position zero, I want to check that one right there, and then I want to see if it's equal to the last one. I want to see if this one here is equal to the last one there. And then I want to see if this one here is equal to that one there. And then I want to see if this one here is equal to that one there. And then I'm not interested about checking the middle if there is a middle. And so to do that, I'm going to um, do an if condition. And I'm going to say if, and I'm going to have S, and then the first position, right? So zero, so that'll be the first position in each of those. If that is not equal to, and then I just have to find the last position. And the last position is going to be equal to my number of runes. So what? It, how many runes do I have? So here I have, you know, uh, three, six, seven runes. So it'll be the number of runes and it'll be minus I, right? So, uh, and then I also have to just minus one. And the reason why is because it's a, a zero based index. And so zero here will give me the first position. And then I'll have R here, which will be seven for this one. And it, well, let's do the first one, mom. It'll be three for this one, three, right? 
and then it'll be minus zero, and then minus one will give me two, and position two is zero, one, two, right? So it's that one. So if those aren't equal, if the first and last are not equal, I'm gonna return false. But if it goes through all of that loop, and so there's my loop, and I'm gonna return true, right? So if it goes through all those loops and never hits a false, then it re will return two. So just see how that works with mom. So the first one will be position zero, will be like M, and then it'll check, uh, you know, zero, uh, it'll check three minus one is two, uh, minus zero is three, minus one is two, it'll check that. And then for the next one, it'll be same thing. So, but it'll go then to the next position, which will be position one. And this will be position one. And with position one, this one will be seven minus one is six, and then and then minus one is five. So there's position one, two, three, four, five. It'll check the zero, the, the O equal to the O. And then if that's not true, it'll return false. And so uh, let's see this run now. I'm gonna save it and then go back over to my terminal. And I'm already in the palindrome zero two. So I'm gonna run this, which that's not recently been used. So I'm just gonna do it that way. And so we got mom is a palindrome, top spot's a palindrome, that is a palindrome. Not poly is not a palindrome, palindrome so that's, that's false. So that's my solution. It's not the most concise. I've seen definitely more concise ones, but I kind of like it. <laughs> I kind of like, like, okay, here's my this, here's that. And, uh, and so that's my solution for the palindrome. I'm interested in seeing your solution. Go to the Golang Playground, code it up, get the link, share it down below in the description, and uh, put your thoughts into the comments too. If you like this video and this playlist, make sure you hit that like button and uh, you know also leave a comment down below. I love hearing from students. It motivates me to make these videos. And uh, if you wanna see more videos on the Go programming language, hit subscribe. And if you wanna take my entire course on learning to code with Go, uh, you could get to it down here at the bottom of that repo at mcclouds.com. You could get to my Learn to Code Go version three. And that is a great class because it teaches you everything in sequential order from the very beginning and build your skills up. So by the time you get to the end of the course, you understand and know what you're doing. <laughs> All right, so that's, uh, that's my solution for this palindrome challenge. See you next time.